This is my current setup with the MacBook Mini and the Magic Keyboard and the Apple Mouse. Um, so let's take a look at some of the drivers here. Take that mouse and open up a window here. And let's see if we can zoom into that window just to see what's happening there. All right, so on this first monitor that we're looking at, this monitor, the 34HC 5CUR, we can see that the resolution is 3440 by 1440, and that's a default. Now, if we change it to 3840 by 2160, it squishes up in a really weird way. Uh, let's take a look at that. So if we do that, we can see that it's still all there, but this looks a little squashed right here. So we'll revert back to our original mode. And now let's look at the second monitor. This is a SE2717. And if we pop that, that resolution is 1920 by 1080. So it's a lower resolution than this 3440 by 1440. A little crisper. So that's just to show you how that works. Now let's take a look at the setup here and zoom out if we can. And let's scroll over to the right. And that's the second monitor over there. What we can do is we can come back to the screen here and we could select that second monitor and then select the rotation here. See if we can see that. That's a rotation. And if we select that and we change that to say 270, it flips it to a vertical. Let's zoom out. Now we see that the screen's gone completely vertical there. And then, of course, we've got the MacBook Air right here. So that's the setup as we have it now. And here we have an option to revert. So we'll revert, we reverted the screen to its default mode. Next, let's take a look at the Mac Mini. This is a 512-gig SSD with 24 gig of unified memory. And in the back, we've got one connection going directly to this monitor, the curve monitor, and one connection going through a little dongle, HDMI, to the second monitor. Now there's room for a third monitor with a vertical, but one of the things we're going to do is replace this dongle because I suspect that that might be better resolution with a different connector. This connector's losing resolution. In addition to that, I have a memory stick here that's about a 500 meg memory stick here. That tends to be a little slow. And then I've got the external memory that I manufactured, and that's on a separate video, and you can look at that. And what we can do is take a look at the screen and then look at, do some speed tests on this external Sabrin drive. So let's see here. For that, let's open up Black Magic. And let's close these windows or reduce the clutter. Bring that about here and zoom in. And let's run it. Now, this is running on the main drive. We're getting about uh, 41, 42 here and about 3,000 here. Now we're at 46 almost, and at 26 here, 4,200 again, 2784, 4570, and 3021. So let's stop that. I'm going to change the uh, target drive to be the Sabrent. And let's select that and run that. Now it's quite a bit slower. That one's 966 and 906. And here we're at 968 and 905. One more time, 964 and 907. So it's quite a bit slower than the internal drive, but it's still fast enough of many things that we might want to do. Let's open another target drive. 
And let's make that the SD card. This is not the fastest SD card. It's fast enough as an extension to the iPhone 15 Pro. So let's run that. And away we go. The needle hardly moves. It's about 167, 166 megabits per second on the right side. And then on the read side, it's come up to 170 megabits per second. Let's look at that again. The right's about 154. And the read's about 354. It's not shabby, but it's not the fastest thing you'll find out there. So that's what I've got connected to. Let's zoom out. So that's what I've got connected to my Mac Mini here. Now let's make a direct connect to that monitor and to see whether a display port connection will improve the resolution on this monitor. It's not yet 4K or even 2K. It's better than 1080, but it's not quite 2K or 4K. So with that, I hope that was interesting. I thank you for watching.